joins us, the best in the business, ABC News political analyst from Washington, D.C. Good morning, Stephen Roberts. Hey, pal. Um, lots to take in over the last 72 hours, including what Thomas Friedman wrote in the New York Times. Pretty staggering that a columnist of uh, Thomas Friedman's stature would um, say that whatever Donald Trump is hiding is hurting all of us right now. Pretty extraordinary the response President Trump has had to the indictment of Russians trying to influence our elections. Well, it's been extraordinary for what he has not said. We haven't heard one word of condemnation of the Russians. We haven't heard one word of reassurance to the American public that he as president would take actions to safeguard the integrity of future elections. His entire focus is on himself, which, of course, is a pattern that we've seen with this president over and over again. He is so his ego is so huge and so fragile that he can't admit any possibility that the election that he won fair and square was somehow tainted. And um, so he always circles back to his own reputation, his own legitimacy, um, and seems totally incapable of uh, any kind of criticism of the Russians. But this is a longstanding pattern. You know, um, just last fall, he said, well, Vladimir Putin told me he was not um, uh, he did not meddle in the election. And I accept his assurances. There's no one else who does. There's no one in his own national security apparatus who agrees with him. His own national security advisor, H.R. McMaster, said over the weekend the evidence of Russian meddling was incontrovertible. The clip that you just played, McGraw, was his own deputy uh, attorney general, Rod Rosenstein, reading out these charges. And yet the president continues to deny the Russian involvement and continues to fail to reassure the American public that he's going to take actions to make sure it doesn't happen again. There's so much news, Stephen Roberts, and you teach a class in media and news and public. Uh, 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 I do. Uh, uh, you know, sort of, uh, uh, um, sort of current events. There's so much news. It's so fast. It's so furious that, that you can't wrap your head around certain things. That you know, there are some things that are ridiculous. There are some things that are big, and it's getting all lost in the wash. But to have a president of the United States, regardless of party. Um, critical of his own intelligence apparatus and his own intelligence teams, while not critical of Russia and Putin in this situation, is downright unbelievable. Well, I, I, I do think even a lot of Republicans are alarmed about this. And you and I have talked many times about the fact that um, this president, when he was elected, uh, there were many Americans who voted for him who did have doubts about his judgment and character, but they voted for him for a whole variety of reasons, starting with the fact they could not abide Hillary Clinton. Um, they were attracted by his message of economic nationalism. They were tired of two, uh, two terms of democratic rule. I mean, there were many factors that helped elect Donald Trump. Uh, but those doubts have not gone away. Those doubts about his judgment, those doubts about his character, those doubts about his temperament are all still there. And what what happens uh, as a result of something like the weekend firestorm or tweet storm, I think it reinforces those doubts. People look and say every one of his national security advisors is telling him the world is black, and he says the world is white. And, 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 and that can only uh, uh, continue to inflame that sense of doubt about his judgment, not only here in America, but among our allies abroad, if you are dealing with the United States and you look at this situation and you say, here's a president who refuses to accept a reality that every one of his own people tells him is true. How do you then deal with him going forward? I think the damage is significant. I, I, you know, I don't know if he's guilty of anything, but he sure is acting guilty. He sure is acting the way a guilty person would act. Which is which well, is what which makes people want to pull their hair out over the whole thing. Well, look, uh, uh, it's certainly true that he is mesmerized, obsessed with the Russian investigation. I, I think to be completely fair, we do not know yet whether this president had any uh, connections with the Russian meddling. We do not know yet whether he's guilty of any kind of crime. So, I, I but it is certainly true that he's done everything possible to thwart this investigation. We know from good reporting by the New York Times that he uh, uh, was uh, on the brink of firing the special prosecutor uh, last summer and was talked out of it by his own people. 
Um, and, uh, uh, you know, you have to, it's certainly a legitimate question to wonder what is he hiding? What is he so afraid of? Uh, but um, let's remember, collusion is not a crime. Where the real vulnerability, McGraw, uh, I think, uh, as it often is in Washington, is not from the crime itself. It's from the aftermath, the investigation. We already have had several Trump associates uh, plead guilty to fraud and, and, and perjury. Obstruction of justice is a crime. Perjury is a crime. Conspiracy is a crime. Fraud is a crime. If there's any legal vulnerability, and I say if because it's still unproven, that's where the danger lies for Trump and his people. Stephen Roberts, ABC News political analyst, even getting and answering the bell with the cold. We love it. Stephen Roberts, take care. Thanks for coming.